Today's video we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. Every day before breakfast I start with around a thousand mils of water, which is about a quart of water. With the best quality water I can find in the moment, I use an old glass juice bottle ideally. What's better than recycling is reusing. So every day before breakfast, I have a quarter water. And so this morning, I'm having watermelon for breakfast. I'm still having a quarter water though. Organic melon, about $22 for this one here. It's a little five kilo half. Let's test the bricks values, shall we? Let's test the bricks. So you get a bit of the, uh, the melon on there. Sort of get the juice on there. Just make sure it's all covered in the plate. Push it over, leave it for a few seconds. It smells... It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think most people in society, if they paid $22 for a little half melon, they'd probably expect better flavour. But it's, been, it's pretty good. I'll call it a 7 out of 10. Bricks Valley around 13 which is okay for melon it's okay it's on the upper end i like them around 18s so the big chart i'm quoting here they said 12 is about average 16 plus is excellent the higher the bricks family the more sugar it contains the more minerals it contains the higher specific gravity it is so the higher the bricks the better that food will be relative to what it would, would be otherwise. So if you've got a melon that's like seven or six versus 16, the six is what most people are like, oh yeah, so I have a piece of slice of melon after my, my burger. But a 16 is like, gets a fucking fruitarian salivating going, oh, oh. <laughs> so yeah. Mm. It's all right, it's average, it's good. It's, you know, a bit above average maybe. So it puts the question out there, if people can't afford the fruit, I mean, let's say let's say you can afford the fruit, let's say you can afford to eat like during and and freely, the couple who spend more money on fruit for personal consumption than anyone else in the world, possibly, I put it out there as a little bit of a challenge. So if you can afford to eat like us, can you get the quality that really satisfies you? I mean, we're not doing this for weight loss, or we sort of, we like being lean. So I'll lie there, but you know what I mean? Like some people, they'll do fucking anything for weight loss. They'll drink motor oil for weight loss, or just, you know, it's like cotton ball, cotton balls and fucking orange juice or some bullshit. People are just dangerous, crappy shit. So we're not like that. We're like, we like to eat, all right? We like to eat tasty food and lots of it. So let's say you're at that sort of paradigm. You can afford it. This next challenge is, can you get it? Where is this satisfying fruit where you just eat it and go, oh my God, that's it. Satisfaction. A lot of people will eat crappy fruit because they just want to lose weight. We're already lean as fuck and we're going to stay lean as fuck because we know how to eat healthy and we prefer fruit, but getting the really quality fruit that satisfies us, that is the challenge here in Australia and almost anywhere in the world. Thailand is the easiest. The U.S. is pretty good as well. Some really good fruit in the U.S. I was very surprised every year I go back there. Some top-notch fruit. So a lot of people can eat crappy fruit for some time, do a bit of weight loss goals or whatever, but they never sustain it long term because eventually that, that, that full-on drive and passion to eat crappy fruit <laughs> goes away especially once you have some quality fruit and then you go back to the shit you're like oh my god it's like when you have a high level relationship or bicycle or, or job or whatever you love doing and then you you go back down to a lower level again you're like oh fucking hell this sucks I can't do it you lose that drive you lose the drive so that's the challenge man is, is getting that high quality fruits
And that's why I always laugh at people who critique us for giving people backup plans. But they're eating like us anyway, behind the scenes. Or they're eating like rancid nut butters or whatever. Most of the time they're eating like us anyway. But they don't want to tell it because they've invested so much money and time in, in raw foodism or whatever. They don't want to be honest and transparent because they don't want to... They don't want to you know, destroy the illusion. They want to keep the hope up. But I think... I understand where they're coming from. I understand where they're coming from. But I think it's better to be realistic. Because this is, this is a realistic lifestyle. Let's be realistic with the challenges or situation, inconvenience, can't get the fruit, whatever. And let people be prepared for that. Versus pretend we live in some fully raw fairy tale or whatever. But it's never that way, is it? It's never that way once we start to dust a bit of the dust off. The shine isn't really there. <laughs> it's sort of like the, the gold coating. And you, and you, I remember I had a gold watch once. And uh, I was like, yeah, I've got a gold watch. And after a few months of wearing it, my sleeve had not worn it down to the silver. And I was looking at it and I said, oh, this is it's not so gold anymore, you know. After a while, you realize it's not as gold as it looks on YouTube or whatever. Reality. So we like to be more real. Relate to people. That's why we are who we are. You know, look at my clothing and shit. Look at us. <laughs> look at us. He really doesn't wear any full-on foundation makeup or whatever or... Our lighting's so so. We like to be more authentic so people can relate to us because I think when you can relate to someone, they can carry your message, the message, whatever you want to call it, and incorporate it into their lifestyle. It's a bit like looking for a, a new hard drive or a solid state drive for your MacBook or your computer. You go on eBay and you, and you read some feedback and you're like, I can relate to that person. They speak my language. I'm not a computer geek, but that person. Speaking my language, I can I can probably put a new hard drive in my computer and, and make it a solid state or whatever. But if it's this full techno jargon, unrealistic magic that you go, oh, that's amazing. You think that's yes, amazing, but you can't really do it because you can't relate to them. So that's what we're trying to do more and more is be the everyday person into health, into weight loss, into fitness, drug-free, steroid-free fitness, no EPO. Just giving people some objective, everyday tips. You can see us in the street. You can talk to us. Anytime. See us out training, do a U-turn, some come say good day. Come ride with us the next few hours, whatever, we don't care. So got the questions, we'll answer them. Face to face. So that's what we're trying to do, is be more and more authentic, more realistic, and no illusions. No illusions. At all. So we're going to weigh out some bananas here. Going to tear the scale, set it to zero for this time. Got some organic bananas nicely chopped here. And we're going to tip them on and weigh them out. There's probably a better way to do this, but <laughs> what I'm going to use is I'm just going to put them in the jug from now on. It's maybe a bit easier. And just minus 600 grams. But So these are organic bananas chopped up. If you chop them up, you can fit more in the blender. You can really pack it in, mash it down. Oh, it's a ramp. There's one on the floor. Eight second rule. Give it a bit of a blow. And it's all good. Bit of fiber. Put it on there. Pick up the rest of them. Slap it on. Slap it on this fry pan. Please don't use oil when you fry things up. This is a pan Freya uses to make some oil-free, sodium-free sauces for her baked potato binges she has every night. Freya's got an amazing physique. She's so slim because she eats healthy. You have to look at other people who have been doing this lifestyle as long as Freya. They're still overweight. And you're like, what the fuck are you eating? <laughs> what are you eating? Doesn't make them bad people, but... So we've got 1,500 grams there. So it's about 1,500 calories bananas. We've got about 100 grams of dried fruit there. That's the fruit-wise straps. It's about 300 calories. So it's 45 grams empty. So we've got 140 grams of sugar there. There you go. So we do the quick calorie math, and we have our smoothie ready to roll. So we've got 1,500, 1,800s, about 2,200 calories here for about $25. Done. It's got a little spider extraction here. Just use the end of your toothbrush. Just be gentle with him. He looks a bit sleepy. It's slow. Yeah, it's I think cold. he's maybe. It is a bit cold. Oh, hello. Come on, little fella. I think he's a bit slow moving. So we're gonna just put him in a little bowl. Fruit. Oh, she, we'll keep on the paper. A, she's all right. It's actually a female. This is a this is a house spider. They they give a, a bit of a bite, but they are pretty friendly. They are pretty friendly. 
they just they don't want to have confrontation. But we'll put them outside. There we go. Done. Done deal. To ask a comment, can you comment on the recent drama <laughs> that's going on at the moment? First, I want to clarify, don't hate anyone. We are going to share our opinions, thoughts, comments and criticisms, however unpopular they might be. So don't confuse sharing an opinion with bashing or hating someone. It's a bit like if your dog does a crap on your lounge room floor and you yell at your dog. Doesn't mean you hate your dog but you dislike what the dog's doing. Question is, can you cover what ATM said in his recent video, saying, Duran Rutter, please call me? Basically, Dan said that he's not a vegan, and he thinks the vegans are a bit too extreme. I don't know what to say about that one. Let's cover some points then. Let's be objective. Dan talks about mucoid plaque. Mucoid plaque has been debunked over and over and over. I cycle with some surgeons here and there. Bicycle ride. Surgeons. They're cutting up bodies all the time. Every surgeon I meet, I'm like, oh, you're a surgeon? Cool. Have you ever done colon surgery? Bowel surgery? Like, all the time, man. Have you ever seen mucoid plaque? They're like, what? I'm like, you know, like, ropes of like, um, you know, like, old plaque in there. And they're like, what? And I'm like, you know, like, there's the stuff you see on those, like, you know, those uh, cleansers and that. What? <laughs> they, 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 don't, they don't know what I'm talking about. What you see with mucoid plaque is the bentonite clay herbs and shit that you bop, ingest, and you crap them out. <laughs> That's like a, a $200 crap right there. That's what you're seeing. Dan, so mucoid plaque, debunked. Ask any surgeon. They're cutting up colons all the time. They know what's going on. Dan says that vegans don't get enough cholesterol and you need to consume cholesterol. So I don't understand from where. Dan asked me to call him. I've been writing emails to Dan all year long. I get more emails than Dan gets. And if someone said, Duran Rider here, blah, 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 or whatever, I'm going to see that. But now Dan wants to talk after all what's going on. <sighs> I think it's a bit late. The horse is bolted, man. The horse is bolted with the truth. Basically, we, we gave uh, ATM, we pointed out that he was selling whey protein back in May. No action was taken until the last few days. I'll give Dan credit for that. But, still selling chicken collagen gelatin, pig adrenal extract, etc. Which Dan says that's fine. There's nothing wrong with those products, he says, and that's the same as him selling those as someone having an Amazon account or whatever, which we used to have selling 801010, promoting that, but we, because we don't promote 801010 anymore, or Doug Graham, we just took that off. But Dan says that's the same. It's okay if you're selling animal products, it's just exactly the same if you're a snake oil seller selling animal products. <laughs> Buy your affiliate links as if you were selling a raw food book on Amazon and then people won't be able to order stuff on other... That's Dan's comparison. Which is one reason I don't want to... We don't want to associate professionally with people like that because, I don't know, and Dan talks about how he recommends one meal a day. He's only eating two oranges today, he says. He promotes calorie restriction. We disagree with that and we don't want to associate with people like that at that level. If, you, if that's what it takes to be a pioneer at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, 
we don't want to be part of that. So being demoted is how it's meant to be. Dan brushed over the point that he still sells his stuff. Talks about how bee products are good for you. The amount of people I've known with bee product allergies in the health world over the last decade is enormous. It's enormous. Some people get go to hospital with anaphylactic shock. Many people don't. They just get facial swelling or abdominal swelling or nervousness in the brain or whatever because a lot of the pollens from the bee pollen are actually toxic like poison ivy, salvation jane, oleander, etc. The bees are scraping all this pollen up, then you're consuming that, you're microdosing these toxic pollens, little small amounts, microdosing, and that causes havoc on your immune system. So I don't recommend bee products. Even if the bees came to me and said, hey, we've worked hard for this pollen and honey, we want you to have it. I'd be like, thanks man, but I wouldn't eat that because it's toxic stuff. Why do we need to eat honey when we've got sugar or fruits or dates or whatever? People say, why do we need sugar if we've got dates? Whatever. We don't need to have... Honey is basically sugar that's been vomited up by the bee. People are scared of bugs and creepy crawlies, but they're eating bee vomit. So we say no to honey. It's unethical. It's unhealthy. It's bad for your teeth. Acidic as fuck. This is basically the, the digestive acids of the bee. Which brings another thing, another point is that Christina put out some recipes with honey in there. And then she took that and said, oh, I didn't do that. No, I don't use honey at all. Drew and Rodo freely hacked my email account and put this up on the internet. <laughs> That's what Christina is saying, which is untrue. I'm not sure why Christina would make up such uh, tall stories like that, but that's what I got in email just a few minutes ago. So there's a lot of drama going on at the moment. So that's my little comments and criticisms there. I find it disappointing, though, that people haven't really responded to the, the, the drama, this, the discussion going on. It's just sort of like, can we just get rid of Drew Rodden freely and pretend everything's just going good as normal? Just push him out of the way and step in the limelight. And, hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> we like to tell our experiences. We like to share our opinion. We like to share our truths. You can't push us out the way and expect we're going to just go, okay, I'll just be like, you know, we're going to stand up and speak for what we believe in. That's what we're going to do. So we don't hate anyone, but... But we will stand up and express ourselves. That's what we're doing. So don't see it as hating or bashing. It's just sharing the truth. If your dog craps on the rug, you tell the dog it's not acceptable behavior. If people do things to us, we'll stand up and say, hey, that's not acceptable behavior. We won't tolerate that. Thank you very much. So that's why we, just, you know, we want to distance ourselves from people that promote calorie restriction, promote animal products, sell animal products so they don't, but they do. People who make up stories about us on the internet, send emails around to people, say, oh, I'm doing on a freely did this to me or whatever, or whatever, you know, like, stop being a liar. Because end of the day, <laughs> we've got all those emails and the truth the truth. But we're not going to put those emails out. There's no need to do that right now. So, But I'm sure people can just realize, just be more mature and be civil. Be a little bit more respectful. Just be honest. Just be, just be, just be fucking honest. Just share the truth. Because when you make up stories, in today's world of emails and into emails and shit, you always get caught out. Your little nonsense always gets caught out. So be honest. So a little moth stuck in the water canister there. We'll get him out. We'll get him out on the on the, uh, on the little finger. There you go, little mothy. Here we have footage of Freely riding up Norton Summit. It's going pretty quick. Some guys trying to drop Freely. If you're a female cyclist, guys don't want you to ride with them. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, they do appreciate your company, but they don't want you making them look bad. So you can see how fast Freely's going. We're passing over the riders. I'm on the back here enjoying the scene. These guys are just trying so hard to get free. There's another cyclist we're passing. 
they're, these guys are very fit. These guys are very fit, but they couldn't drop freely. Look at her. Look at her. Just pushing the pedals, spinning at it, spinning it. <coughs> so the guy in front of Freely, he's on a ten thousand dollar S Works bench, passing another rod on the left here. He's on a that's a twelve thousand dollar BH Ultralight. Look at Freely, just how quick she passed him. Freely's vegan seven years. Look at her. Little legs. Zooming up and down the hill. That's what we're talking about. Another rider just passing people left, right, and center. Here we have some organic polenta. This is cornmeal, certified organic. We always try and use everything organic when possible, especially your staples. Do your best to get organic. This is GMO free organic corn. This is what Kenya lives on. The Kenyan runners, they live on cornmeal as their staple. Bananas, corn, and sugar are the staples of the lean Kenyan runners. If you ask a Kenyan runner, ugali, ugali, that's the cornmeal. I'm not gonna show you how to cook it up because there's plenty of recipes in the net, but this is cornmeal, very, very slimming food. Get organic, it is extremely slimming. High energy, excellent for next day's stamina. Is it as good as bananas? It's not, but it's pretty close. And it's something good to have in the pantry because it's always ripe. You just put it on the stovetop, cook it up. Just Google up how to make ugali. And it's very easy, it's very cheap, it's very nutrient dense, and it's very slimming, like I mentioned before. Just look at Kenya. Kenya lives on corn. Anyone who says corn is fattening, they wouldn't have a fucking clue. Tell them, have you been to Kenya lately? Do you know any Kenyans? They live on corn. I do. And they're slim and lean. They're like greyhounds. So ugali. There it is there. It's just dried out, crushed up corn, pretty much. Amazing food. So we have here a photo, this is in Thailand last year. I got third in a running race and the Kenyans placed one, two. So you got Banana Man versus the Core Brothers. So fruit or starch, be that your staple, you will achieve Olympic level body fat levels in due time. There's no doubt about it. This is how it is. Fruit or starch. Make your choice at meal time. Understand both will get you lean as fuck. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. If you eat like a fucking Kenyan, you will fucking look like a Kenyan in due time. Please don't write me, why do I look like a sumo wrestler? Well, you're not eating like a Kenyan, are you? Or you're not eating like a fruitarian? Think about it. 